So this video will deal with the second challenge question on our vector review. Um, the first one dealt with projection, which is finding the parallel components of a certain vector along another. And this one has to do with finding a vector or direction defined by a unit vector that is perpendicular to a particular plane, where the plane is defined by two vectors, which we call the normal to the plane. Much like normal forces, this is normal perpendicular to the plane. So again, we had dealing with the same vectors as we were in part A. We have vector A and B, both in IJK components. And to visualize this, we'll once again use the 3D vector plotter at academo.org. So here it is again. The URL is up here if you ever want to do it yourself. Same vectors as before, already keyed in. Blue is A, red is B. Now, for any two given vectors, as long as they're not parallel or anti-parallel, there's only one specific plane in 3D space that will contain both of them. So we can spin this around until they sh they're shown to be a single line. In which case, we're basically looking straight into a plane that contains both of these. Let me draw this for you a little bit better. So in this view, basically, the vectors lie along this plane. And this plane in green goes in and out of the page as the 3D space is rotated right now. You can see that it contains both the vectors. Now, of course, the vectors themselves come in and out to our view a little bit because it's 3D. But that's the plane that contains both those vectors. So whenever you have two vectors in space, as long as they're not parallel or anti-parallel, there's only one unique plane that will hold both those vectors. What we're trying to find is we're trying to find a vector whose unit vector is perpendicular to the plane. We'll call this C. The question specified that there's two answer, and you can see a little more clearly why there's two answer, because you can have something perpendicular this way. We'll call that C1. And then you can have it perpendicular the other way, which, of course, you know then C1 is just the negative of C2. So we just will find one of them, and then we'll find the other one. So how do we find one of them? Well. If C is perpendicular to a plane that contains A and B, that means that C is perpendicular to A and it is perpendicular to B. Hint, hint, wink, wink. Through what operation do we obtain a vector that is perpendicular to both of the initial vectors? Or just to re-illustrate it in another way, let's say A looks like that and B looks like that. This angle doesn't have to be necessarily perpendicular, but we want another vector C such that it's perpendicular to both of these. Well, how do we get C? This quite naturally comes from the cross product because A cross B will result in a vector C such that A is perpendicular to C and B is perpendicular to C. And by extension, C must be perpendicular to the plane that contains both A and B. And you can see this arrangement here should be familiar to you. And if you do your right-hand rule, you can see that if you cross A cross B, you will get C pointing in the direction as I've drawn it. So let's clear this up because cross product takes a bit of space. A cross B. And depending on what method you use to do cross product, I like to... Just kind of write them up so that I go. Remembering, of course, I have this. If I go this way, I get positive. If I go that way, I get negative. That's the way I remember it. You can remember it however you want. And not to make my life too messy, I like to list my IJK in columns like this so that I know what term goes where. So let's go through this somewhat slowly. Uh, we have 1i cross 
four i i cross i nothing, so we don't have to write that in. Then one i cross three j i cross j gives you k, and that's positive three. And then I have i cross k, which is negative j. So then I have negative of one times negative two. So negative of negative two is positive two because i cross j. We're going from here over this way. So then we look at the second term, j term. Negative two j cross i. J cross i gives you negative k. That once again gives us a positive eight. J cross j is nothing. J cross k gives you positive i. Negative two times negative two gives you a four, and then so on and so forth. Then we can sum things up. So this vector c, it's going to be negative five i plus fourteen j plus eleven k hat. But specifically, we don't want any vector. We want a unit vector. So to get the unit vector c hat, we just take the vector. And we divide by the magnitude of such vector. Let's work out the magnitude. The magnitude of the vector is I'm not going to write these all out, but you get the idea. It's the take each of the components, square it, square root. Uh, calculator gets you eighteen point four nine, and so we will take each of these components and divide by eighteen point four nine, and we will get rounding it off to say two sig figs. And there's a unit vector that points in a direction that is perpendicular to that plane. Now, of course, as we've talked about earlier, say here's the plane, we can have one pointing that way, but we could also have another vector pointing down, and that's also perpendicular. So the other choice is, of course, we just multiply this by negative. So in which case, we can have positive i negative j. And negative k, so both are valid answers, and that's how we can use cross product to naturally find a vector that's perpendicular to two other vectors, or in this case, that's perpendicular to a plane, which can be defined using two vectors. So hopefully, this shows you a little bit about some of the vector operation we do and. How it can be applied in different interesting ways to give us a means of dealing with more complex geometry.